Next, this discuss the fixed effects regression in causal inference. Um, regression models with fixed effects are primary workforce for causal inference in, with panel data, especially in social sciences. You see this used a lot. Uh, researchers use them to adjust for unobserved time invariant confounders. And as I said to you, it's related to the difference in difference design in the case of two by two, two time period case, but not in general. Um, this is something called the no minute variable, um, you know, account for the minute variables uh, or endogeneity or selection bias. There's different terms, but it's basically trying to adjust for the unobserved time invariant confounders. Here is a quote from the Angry Stempiske, good instruments are hard to find, so we like to have other tools to deal with unobserved confounders. Basically, the, um, using the uh, fixed effects is, is a way to deal with, uh, with that type of problem, with unobserved confounders. Um, in political science also, the fixed effects regression can scarcely be faulted for being the bearer of bad tidings. So, Basically, there's a um, strong belief that the fixed effects, effectiveness of fixed effects in, in uh, uh, social science literature. So the question we might ask is, what are the, in general, uh, causal assumptions of regressions with fixed effects? Okay. How are these models related to the other causal inference methods? So we'll explore this question throughout this module. Um, let's think about the unit fixed effects regression, which is the sort of basic uh, regression model. So here, yit uh, is the outcome, alpha i is the unit fixed effects, and xit is the treatment variable. Okay, so this is called one-way fixed effects linear regression. You have unit fixed effects. Uh, it's not two-way fixed effects uh, regression model. This is one-way fixed effects linear regression model. Typically, in the regression class, you learn the strict exogeneity assumption, where the error term is independent of not only the um, x, but also the um, unit fixed effects. So conditional on um, unit fixed effects, so, so you can think of the unit fixed effects as uh, accounting for the unobserved confounders, unit-specific time invariant confounders. One thing to note is about the strict exogeneity is that Xi includes all uh, Xit, so Xit all time periods. Okay, so the error term needs to be independent of the future Xit as well as future X as well as uh, past X. We can represent this model using DAG, which will make it uh, make everything clearer. Um, this you can think of this as a non-parametric. Uh, version of this unit fixed effects regression. So here I'm going to use the UI to represent a set of unobserved unit specific time invariant confounders. And so the linear regression model that's listed in the first line is a special case of this non, non parametric structural equation model. Okay. Now, as you can see, that the yit is affected by xit. Um, as well as UI, and which is the unobserved uh, confounder, as well as you know the error term, um, and so there's an arrow from x x1 to y1, x2 to y2, and x2 to y3. Okay? Xit is affected by the previous x's as well as the unobserved confounder u. Okay? So this is a DAG representation of the uh, one-way fixed effects model. There are three assumptions you might notice. The past treatments do not affect the current outcome. There is no arrow going from the past treatment to the current outcome. So for example, x1i doesn't affect y1, y1, y1 okay. Past outcomes do not affect the current outcome. So there's no arrow from y1 to y2, for example, or y1 to y3. The past outcomes do not affect the current treatment, so there's no arrow from y1 to x2, for example. So the absence of arrows represents the assumptions that are made in this one-way fixed effects linear model. Now, what happens if the past outcomes actually directly affect the current outcome? So I added to the previous DAG, I added the red arrows. Okay, so what happens if the past outcomes directly affect the current outcome. 
Fortunately, in this case, the identification is still possible. You don't have to worry about this. The reason is that past outcomes do not confound XIT, YIT relationship given UI. Right? So as long as we have a fixed effects, we do not have to um, worry about the blocking, uh, worry about the backdoor path as long as you, um, you account for the UI. Because XI, one, the past outcome did not directly affect the treatments, current treatment. Okay. So we don't need to adjust for the past outcomes because they are already controlled for by adjusting for the um, fixed effects UI. Okay. Now, what about if the past treatments directly affect the current outcome? So now I added um, the red arrow uh, going from the past outcomes to the current, uh, past treatments to the current outcome. Now, what this means is that we have to now directly adjust the past treatment. So you could include um, past uh, treatments as something to control for, and that would be sufficient so long as uh, you also include the UI. So, so this should be in a linear regression would be easy. You can include the lagged treatment, um, you know, treatment history as a covariate uh, in your regression model. However, one thing to note that it's impossible to adjust for entire treatment history and the UI at the same time because the entire treatment history um, may be unique to that uh, particular uh, observation, especially if the number of time periods is large, right? So the number of combinations um, is going to be, um, you know, increasing exponentially. If you have 10 time periods, number of unique um, unique treatment combination is going to be very, very unique treatment history is going to be very large. So, controlling that um, at least non parametrically would be impossible. Um, so, uh, there is some limitation, but in principle, you can include the lagged uh, treatment history uh, in order to adjust this kind of confounding. Okay. So, um, in practice, often people adjust for a small number of past treatments, say three time periods or four time periods although that choice tends to be arbitrary. Finally, what about if the past outcomes directly affect the current treatment? Okay, so here I added the red arrow where the past outcome is affecting the future uh, treatment. Okay, so if somebody takes up the treatment based on the past outcome, that would be the situation here. And this induces correlation, which is part of the YI, right, the epsilon, and the future treatments. Because now the future treatment is based on the past outcome. So the um, correlation term, epsilon term in there, is going to be correlated with um, the x uh, future x. Okay. What that means is that strict exogeneity assumption will be violated even if you adjust for unobserved component u. So this leads to the violation of strict exogeneity. So no adjustment is sufficient. If this, uh, if the past outcome actually affects the future treatment, then the fixed effects model wouldn't be able to um, uh, deal with that by simply adjusting the past outcome. Um, so what this means is that there's no feedback effect over time. Like the standard fixed effects uh, model uh, is very static. It doesn't allow the past outcome to affect the future treatment, then the future treatment affect the outcome and so on. Like there's no feedback, uh, treatment outcome feedback over time, dynamic um, relations between them. So the uh, standard fixed effects model sort of excludes that possibility. And if, if that dynamic relationship is it actually is present, then the assumption will be violated. So this is an important limitation of the standard fixed effect. It's the you're controlling for unobserved time invariance, but unit specific confounders at the expense of not being able to adjust for this uh, ability to adjust for this type of dynamic relationship between the treatment and the outcome.
Finally, I would like to mention the instrumental variable approach, which tries to deal with this problem, the situation of past outcomes affecting the future treatment. So here is the uh, DAG and the AR1 model. So here we have um, fixed effects alpha i, as well as the lagged outcome, um, uh, the one lag, one previous lag, yi t minus one. Okay, so in this scenario, uh, previous lag is a confounder affecting both the treatment take up xit as well as yit. So we need to we need to control for yit minus one, but we also want to include uh, fixed effects, unit fixed effects of phi. In the previous slide, I told you that this model um, is not really identified. You cannot just identify this model by conditioning on yit minus one. So we cannot just run uh, simple regression here. Um, the approach that's being used quite a bit is using the instrumental variables. Okay, so the idea is that uh, instead of running this squares regression, we're going to use the instruments where we notice in this DAG, in this particular DAG, there is no arrow from Y1 to Y3. Okay, so the previous lag, Y2 affects Y3. That's why in the AR1 model that it's included, but the two lag, two period back, Y1 doesn't directly affect Y3. Only affects, affects Y3 through Y2. Okay? Similarly, X1 and X2, there's no direct arrow into X, Y3. So those are also uh, only affecting Y3 through other variables. Okay? What that means is that these three variables um, can be used as instruments. And uh, this approach is done by generalized method of moments, and Ariano Bond is the one who uh, pioneered this approach, this type of approach. So the idea here is that um, since conditioning, when you have a fixed effect, since conditioning on the lagged outcome isn't sufficient to uh, get identification, uh, if the lagged outcome is a confounder, we assume instead that if you take enough lag, there is no direct effect. Okay? And they use that uh, assumption as exclusion restriction assumption to, to consistently estimate the causal effect. So it relies on the exclusion restriction, how far back you need to go in order to say, um, you know, two year lag, three year lag is not going to affect the current outcome. And if you're willing to make that assumption, then you can use those variables as um, as instrumental variables, um, you know, assuming there's no other confounders. Um, uh, all the confounders are, uh, you know, accounted for by the by the fixed effects uh, inclusion of fixed effects. Okay. Now the problem of this approach, in my view, is that it, the choice of instrument is often arbitrary. So it's unclear substantively whether two lags are enough or three lags are enough. Right? It's, it's really hard to make that judgment in many substantive applications. And so I feel that unless you have a strong uh, justification to say, like, you know, two, um, if you go back two time periods, that variable won't affect, directly affect the current outcome this approach may not be uh, credible uh, from the causal inference point of view. Um, in fact, the application of these approaches often lack the substantive justification and a wide certain number of lags is chosen to, um, to estimate these uh, dynamic relationships.